Um, one reason I asked Merrick for five pitches um, is that there are five musical letters in my name. Uh, G, A, E, D, and finally S, which you now know is the same as E flat, um, as H is B. You know, Tim explained that. Um, I chose an introduction, a rondo form, so I could have the sections repeat more often, but as I composed this, it turned into a sonata. So it's just, it's just a normal sonata. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is Merrick allowed us to have a C section of the piece, one middle section that used a tone row. So we could use all 12 notes, but it had to follow a pattern, and you couldn't deviate from the pattern or play another one of the 12, 11 pitches until you'd re you played all the other 11. You, you, you know what I'm... It's hard to explain. Merrick did that, and, and I did that, although in my piece, um, it's more of a dream, a tantalizing glimpse of these 12 tones, these possibilities beyond artificial limitations. Just a taste. As the piece developed, I decided to gear this as program music. That is like Merrick's piece. It tells a story, illustrating a very specific one of the 150 Hebrew Psalms. To be fair, it's relatively well known, not an obscure one like 78 or something. Uh, it's one you've probably heard of, but I'm not telling you which one. That's for you all to guess as you're listening to this. And this is the premiere of my Morceau de Concours, which just means competition piece. But this is not a competition. It is a challenge. And unlike in Xerxes and the Spartans War, we're all winners.
psalm was it? Are there any guesses? Shout out your guesses. Which psalm? It's not a weird one. Well, it's a weird one, but any guesses? That's a good guess. 